Three hidden ways that a flat foot is giving you pain and what you can do about it. I personally have had a flat foot problem before. My problem was that one of my feet was actually flatter than the other. And I didn't actually notice it because it wasn't a serious difference. However, when I did exercise, my friends noticed that when I come up from a squat, my body shifted to one side. And it didn't matter what sort of tricks I used. I used rubber bands pulling me to one side, I used different shoes, I tried putting the bar in a different place. It didn't really work. The reason is that it was my feet giving me the problem, but I didn't notice it yet. That's why I call it hidden ways. A flat foot is interesting because in my experience, people who have flat feet don't usually have pain in the foot. Comment below if you have flat feet and no foot pain. So today's video will share with you how to check if you have a flat foot and also some simple things you can do to improve your flat foot situation. I've used these methods on myself and my clients and it's worked really well. My own flat foot is pretty much gone. I hope you can stand up and try these movements with me. These will show you the impact the flat foot has on other areas of your body and then you'll understand why flat foot gives you hidden problems. Other pain in your body or discomfort or tightness can often come from your foot. If you're standing up, you can follow me. I would like you to take one of your feet and imagine you have a really flat foot on one side. I'm going to take my left foot. I'm going to give myself a flat foot. Do the same yourself. Give one of your feet a flat foot. So I'm going to give myself a flat foot. Take note, what happens to my knee? My knee starts to bend in. This is a problem especially for ladies. Ladies already have wider hips and if they add a flat foot to that, the knee angle called the Q angle will become bigger and that increases the risk of knee ligament problems. And the increased Q angle has been widely correlated with women athletes and knee injury as well. So, if you have a flat foot and you're a lady, your risk of knee problems goes up. So, the first thing that your flat foot affects is your knee. Now, once again, give yourself the flat foot. And what happens to your hip? The knee goes in, and what happens to your hip? Your hip, does it go forward or back? You'll notice that your hip on the flat foot side goes forward. What happens to its height? Does it go up or down? It will go down. So when you have a flat foot, your hip on that side goes forward and down. When your hips are rotated, what happens next? You put stress on the ligaments of the hip and also you put rotation into the spine. Here's a big problem because the lower back actually is not designed to move that much. Each segment of the lower back is only given about 2 degrees of flexibility in rotation. So, if you've already got a flat foot and your spine and hips are already rotated, you've used up the 2 degrees. And any additional turn or additional stress, additional load will more easily give you a lower back problem. Now, a flat foot you see affects your knee and your lower back. But what happens if you have two flat feet? If you have two flat feet, this thing happens on both sides. So your hips go forward and down on both sides and you have an excess curve in your lower back. You go like that. This is like wearing high heels all day and it's very uncomfortable even if you're a guy. So a woman who has flat feet and wears high heels will have even greater back discomfort. And guys will have it too, even if you don't wear high heels. What happens when you have this curve? Your back gets really tight all the time. And when you have this excess curve in your lower back, the tendency is that to compensate, your body will also increase the curve of your neck and shift your head forward. When this happens, you get a tight neck, a tight back, and you don't know why. You could go for lots of massage, lots of stretching, lots of therapy, but it doesn't seem to work. It could be because your flat foot is influencing all these other parts of your body. You'll notice that even if your left-right difference is not a lot or your arch is not that flat, it's not about whether it's a lot or not. It's that even a small difference over a long period of time can give problems. So here are some tests you can use to check if you have a flat foot. The first test is very simple and it's the one that I noticed improvement on when I fixed my flat foot. It is to get your feet wet and stand on some place where you can see your wet footprints. If your footprints are the same on both sides and there's blank space in the middle, this is a good thing. It means that your foot is not completely flat and that your feet are balanced. You may have space on both sides but one space is smaller than the other. This is a sign that maybe your feet aren't perfectly balanced. 
I realised my flat foot was fixed when I played in the water with my kids and I came out and stood on the concrete and my footprints were exactly the same when I noticed they were not the same before. So this is a simple test that you can do at home to check if you might have a flat foot. The second test shows if you have a very obvious flat foot. You can use your finger and stick it under the arch of your foot and see how far it goes in. And then you do the same on the other foot. If they go in the same distance on both sides, you know, probably your feet don't have an asymmetry. But if one side goes in all the way and one side hardly goes in at all, this is a problem. The third and final test you can use to check if your feet are flat and if they're symmetrical is that you can ask someone to take a photo of the back of your ankles and the heels of your feet while you're standing in a relaxed posture. Look at the angle of your Achilles tendons. There should be a slight bowing in, but they should be equal and not excessive. If this angle is too much, you will likely have flatter feet. Now you've seen how a flat foot can be the hidden cause of pain in other areas of your body. You've seen how to test for a flat foot. Now let's go through how to fix it. There is good news. The arch of the foot is made up of muscles. And muscles can be trained. Muscles need a few things. They need to be strong, but they also need the correct signal from the brain to turn them on. That's why the first tip is very important. The first tip is to increase the sensitivity of the sensors on your foot so that the right signals go to your brain so your brain knows how to turn on the muscles of your arches better. The foot is full of sensors. That's why the foot has so many bones, so many ligaments and so many sensory pieces in it. It's very important that these sensors are sensitive. Sensors pick up different kinds of sensation. Some is light touch, some is a small light touch, some is more firm pressure and so we want to stimulate these sensors. To do this, you want to give the surface of your foot different kinds of sensations. Three simple ones are light touch with a small object like the tip of a pen, light touch with many fingers at one time like the whole palm of your hand, and a more firm touch like this, pressing in like massaging. To do that, you can use your fingers or you can use a massage ball or massage tool. Don't press so hard that it hurts, that's not good, but you just want to press to give the foot the sensations. This helps your foot recognize the muscles and use them properly. The second thing is you want to start to train the muscles. I'm going to show a few different exercises. The first one is a towel crunch. You may have seen this before, but the key thing is that you want to use two different types of actions. The first action is more with your big toe, pulling on the towel. And the second action is more with your little toes, pulling on the towel. There are different groups of muscles controlling your big and little toe. So you need to train them separately. If you find that the toe crunch exercise is too easy, you can add a small weight on the end of the towel to increase the difficulty. My suggestion is that you do this toe crunch exercise for time. You can do it for about 45 to 60 seconds with your big toe, then continuously do it 45 60 seconds with your little toe. After you've done with one foot, you do the other foot. While you're doing the other foot, this foot is resting. After that, you switch back. So you do about 4 sets per foot. This is about 10 minutes. But remember, you're training a muscle. You need to give it enough volume of training to help it develop. The next exercise is to teach your foot to create that arch. So what you do is you sit down with your legs straight, you let your feet go up, and then you push them down and toes together and create that arch. Up again and out, down and toes together and create the arch. Many people find that if their arch muscles are not strong, when they first start doing this exercise, your foot muscles will start to cramp and you'll feel uncomfortable. Don't worry about it, this is just a sign that your foot muscles may be too weak and this exercise will help you to train them. So give this exercise a try and comment below, did your feet feel like cramping? If they do, don't feel bad. When I first did this exercise, my feet felt like cramping too. For the toes up, toes down exercise, the important part of the exercise is when your toes are pointing down and in and creating that arch. So I would do this movement stretch and down and actually hold it there for maybe 10 seconds and then repeat. You do about five or six reps of this, then you rest. You can do about four sets. So you've improved the sensors in your feet. You've strengthened the muscles of your feet. Finally, if your arch is not fully recovered yet, you need to support your feet temporarily when you're doing heavy exercise. I generally do not recommend orthotics. The reason is that orthotics support your feet too much. You can have the most expensive, fancy, custom orthotics. The problem is that they support your foot so much that your muscles never learn to work. I'll give you an example. When I was small, I broke my hand. I fell rollerblading. So I broke this bone and I had a surgery. I had a scar here, you can see. 
and there was a metal plate inside. I had a cast for I think 12 weeks. After 12 weeks, I removed the cast. After I removed the cast, were these muscles bigger or smaller? For sure, they were smaller. They didn't need to be used because they were supported by the cast. The same thing happens if we constantly wear foot orthotics for too long. Unfortunately, when we see clients with this problem, what happens is this. The first year, maybe they support 4 millimeters. Two years later, man, I'm having all these problems again. And then they're suggested to go up to 6 millimeters, and then 8. And where does it stop? Because you never learn to train the muscles, you never improve the muscles, and your arches never develop. You need more and more support over time. This is not the way we want to improve our health. However, there is an exception. When you are lifting heavy weights, or when you're doing very strenuous exercise in the gym, and your arch is still not fully recovered, for that 20 or 30 minutes that you're exercising, I do suggest you put an arch support in just temporarily. Because if you're not fully recovered yet and you have a lot of weight on a bar or you're doing a lunge, that foot is going to collapse and it's going to be difficult for your body to maintain balance and you're going to stress other joints too much because the weight is a lot. So, for a short period of time, when your body's under intense exercise, you can use an arch support temporarily. As you do more and more of the exercises and the correction methods, you'll need this support less and less. While most of your foot arch control is kind of subconscious, you don't have to think about it, it will help for you to consciously train this while you're training also. When you're doing lower body exercises, most coaches and even yourself, you may think, oh, keep your chest up, okay, keep your back tight. But if you have a flat foot problem, I would suggest that you actually focus on the function of your feet when you're doing these exercises. For most of you, you're not professional weightlifters or powerlifters. This is not your job. So it's more important to do exercise that is safe for you and good for you. So when you're training your lower body, I would suggest even if you lower the weight that you're using, but you focus on your foot when you're doing it, that would be helpful. This means that when you're doing lunges, for example, or leg presses or squats or deadlifts, you would actually focus on digging your toes into the ground. This will force your body to create that arch when you're lifting. This combined with the arch support should keep you safe while exercising as you recover your flattened foot arches. I hope you found this useful. Share it with someone you love who may have a flat foot. Comment if you have a question and subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell.